Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Today we're going to have a look at MX19 Beta. So this is a great little distribution, um, particularly if you have lower spec machine and even some older machine as this is one of the more modern Linux distributions that still runs a 32-bit system out of the box that is very user friendly. And so we're going to have a look at it. So uh, first, if you are unfamiliar with MX Linux, so this is a cooperative between Antics um, and uh, former MEPIS communities. Uh, we're actually going to talk a little bit more about that in a bit. Um, but if you want uh, want some uh, system that is very nice, very lightweight, user friendly, has a lot of good tools, you can actually come over here and grab it. Now we're going to be looking at a beta today. So. The one that is available for download now is 18.3, but we are going to look at the 19 beta, which is now based on Debian 10 Buster. It has the upgraded packages from there, and it has a few other tools built into the system as well. So you can actually download it um, directly from their site. You can get support, other information. There's a lot of excellent tools about this. So what we're gonna do is I've already installed this and uh, I think I have other places where we have run through the installation process before. So we're not gonna run through the installation process today, but I do actually wanna show you what the operating system looks like once it is installed. Now it does have one of the best installers. It's very easy, very user friendly to, to set up. And uh, once you get it set up, then you can go ahead and uh, just start using it. So of course we are in a virtual machine. We are kind of in our startup mode here. And uh, we should launch full screen after our login, of course. <clears throat> if it doesn't, then uh, we'll just kind of move over to full screen. So let's go ahead and do that. <clears throat> And so we are going full screen. Hopefully the uh, wallpaper fixes itself. Looks like it may not, oh, there it goes. Now the wallpaper fixes itself. All right, so MX Linux is distinctive in that it is one of the distros, kind of like Ubuntu that has the panel along the side. And uh, so if you're looking for something that gives you the most uh, vertical real estate, it is an excellent option. We have, a, um, we have a nice uh, conky setup over here. We can see we're using 7% of the memory right now out of the box. There is six gigabytes of RAM in here. And uh, we actually should have, um, uh, we should have a uh, HTOP installed. So let's go ahead and look for HTOP. Just have a quick look at what this is looking like here. So we are running on 492 megabytes of RAM, 467 now megabytes of RAM. So it is actually a, uh, it is actually a, a very nice, um, uh, very nice uh, system resources. So what do you get when you install MX Linux? It is based on Debian. So if you are trying to avoid your Ubuntu branches, but still have a lot of good user-friendly tools, MX Linux is definitely a way to go. We have an XFCE panel that is set up here. So of course we have our basic logout information at the very top. So this is gonna give us our shutdown, restart, logout, switch users. Very bottom we have our menu where we can come in here, we can search for things. We can set up our favorites over here and then look at all the different applications. We have a nice task panel over here. Um, everything from here's your updates to install. Here is unmounting drives information for your computers, network. So all these items are down here. We have a basic file manager and we have Firefox. All right, as far as the applications installed out of the box, we do have a lot of accessories that make this a very nice system. We have basic archive managers, not an excessive amount of tools, but enough accessories to make it feel like a, a, good, a good system. So. See file managers are in here, the MX uh, updater, passwords, keys, task managers, some basic things there. Um, development tools, oh, where are we at? Development tools, icon browser, and Genie. Games, we do have a few games installed, not a lot, just a couple there. We have GIMP, this should be GIMP uh, 2.10, and LibreOffice should be at 6.1 branch. Uh, you can see uh, we have Firefox, HexChat, Transmission, um, GNOME dial-up tool, and Firefox. And then under Multimedia, we have Clementine for music. We have VLC for general. And then 
There's a few other things, Elsa Mixer. A lot of good tools in here. Um, not everything comes with uh, Pulse Audio Volume Control or Elsa Mixer. So these are actually great additions for the multimedia. Now under your MX Tools, this is where this distribution is going to stand out a little bit with some of your other distributions and that we have a lot of tools in here. Um, everything from uh, package managers to formatting USB drives. We have kernel updaters, um, boot repairs, a lot of these different tools that we have. Now, MX Codex installer. So most Linux distributions do not come with all of your codecs installed out of the box. So if you do need all of the extended multimedia codecs, go ahead and uh, click on this guy here. You're gonna have to enter your password. And then this will give you the ability now to install uh, codecs. The reason many Linux distributions do this, it seems like an extra step, but it is because of licensing and legal responsibilities. Linux is freely distrib distributed around the world. Not everywhere around the world will allow you to run those codecs, particularly depending on what your system is doing. As far as Office, we do have the full suite of LibreOffice installed and a few other extra tools. Makes it a very good system to install right out of the box and get ready to work with all your documents. And then we have our basic system settings over here. Now you can access all of your system settings in the control panel as well uh, by accessing it right up here on the menu. We have our panel here, we have our logout, user stuff, lock screen. And then we have basic system um, system settings over here. So we'll go ahead and uh, pull up this panel just to kind of give you the idea of what we have here. So up here we can adjust our appearance. Here is our desktop. So if you want to run icons on your desktop, um, this is where you can do that. So you see your default icons. There's really nothing there. Let's see if I can expand this out a little bit. Okay. So if you want to put your home folder, things like this on the desktop, you can go ahead and do that. We can adjust the size of the icons here as well. So if those are a little bit too small for you, you can go ahead and do that. See, we have an update just popped up. So the system will check for updates periodically and turn green if we have updates to install. So, uh, but uh, unlike Windows, this is not going to force those updates on you. It's going to notify you and uh, give you the option to install them when you are ready to go. Uh, menu applications, wallpapers. It looks like we do not have a lot of wallpapers uh, installed on default. You know, that's kind of an okay thing. Uh, it depends on, on what you want or not. Hit the all settings to go back. As far as your MX tools, when you click on this guy here, this is all of those individual tools that you have in the system. So one of the things that makes this an excellent uh, system is we have boot repair if you're Boots, uh, if your computer just kind of goes a bit crazy and you need to fix the boot, you can go ahead and fix the boot up repair. The cleanup uh, removes those old files. It's basically running CCleaner on your old Windows computer. Boot options to adjust your startup. Uh, if you have NVIDIA drivers, you can go ahead and install those. Here's another place where those codecs are at. Just a lot of different tools over here. There is a welcome screen. So the welcome screen here will lead you back to the tools and tweaking will give you the panels and such. All right. So here's your themes, your compositors, all these different items here. So you have everything uh, everything there, there that you might need. So that's what uh, one of the things. Now their package installer as well, if I remember correctly, this is gonna be a simple installer very much like Linux lights that we did the other day. So this is not giving you every single application that exists, but it is giving you the most requested applications. So, you know, Chromium, here's Google Chrome, Firefox EXR, uh, ESR, which is a more LTS Firefox. We have Opera, Pale Moon. It's good to see Pale Moon and Waterfox in here. So if you want alternative browsers, you have those as well. Any uh, individual children tools, you can install those. Here's some docs, we have two primary docs. So this is an excellent installer in that it gives you a lot of, a very nice simple to navigate, uh, a simple to navigate system in here where you can actually get in here and install the most common things without having some complications that you might get in like Synaptic, which is still available if you need Synaptic. But this is nice because it gives you the ability to 
simply select what you have, install, uninstall things. Here's our uh, stable repos. Uh, so this is kind of be um, a little bit more like synaptic in that you can just go in here and select individual libraries. Here's test repositories, Debian backports, and we have a separate spot for flat packs as well. So flat pack support is here. And uh, one of the changes, in fact, is it will tell you now the versions of the flat packs. I know some people have asked for that. Um, let's see if it actually gets to loading. I might have jumped through those screens a little bit too quickly. Oh, there we are. All right, so here's where you can see your version number for your individual flat packs. So if you are looking to install a flat pack, they're all available right here inside of the MX package installer. So this is an excellent tool um, overall. So uh, there is just a, a very brief synopsis of MX Linux. Uh, who is this for? Well, MX Linux is going to be for any person who wants to get out of the Ubuntu ecosystem, but stay kind of in the Debian e ecosystem, but not have to worry about some of the more complicated things that you get inside of the Debian world. Not that Debian is hard or complicated, but there are some things that can frustrate a brand new user. So MX Linux is a great gateway into the Debian world. Uh, it has a good balance between tools and applications and a lot of tools for the beginning user. So if you, particularly if you're experimenting with Linux, you have an old computer laying around, MX Linux is a great one to throw onto the computer to figure out if this is a great operating system for you to use. So that's kind of what my take is on MX Linux. Let me know your take in the comments down below.